mission of the Department of Biochemistry and Biophysics at the University of Pennsylvania Perlman School of Medicine is to promote and execute high quality research towards a quantitative understanding of molecular mechanism in medicine and biology. Being a biochemistry and biophysics department in a medical school, we're committed to promulgating this mission into the clinical arenas, and this guides the research problems of the faculty in the department. The university and the medical school are on the same campus, so this allows undergraduates, medical students, graduate students and postdocs to come together to study biochemistry and biophysics in a biomedical context. Indeed, we work in a wonderfully collaborative environment. In my own research, we use crystallography and quantitative biochemistry to try to understand how mutations found in cancer patients cause uncontrolled cell growth. Penn's collaborative environment allows us to do this right alongside clinical oncologists. So they get involved in the science and we get to see our science affecting clinical practice directly. I think this kind of experience is really very important for the next generation of biochemists and biophysicists. The department is also home to the Johnson Research Foundation, which allows us to support excellent core facilities in NMR, EPR, X-ray crystallography and scattering, computational biology, and a variety of other imaging techniques. In addition, the department is the home of Penn Medicine's electron microscopy core, which has recently undergone a major expansion. A technique that's exploited quite a bit in the Department of Biochemistry and Biophysics is X-ray crystallography to understand the structure and function of proteins. In my laboratory, we use X-ray crystallography and complementary techniques in biochemistry and biophysics to try to understand the quantitative aspects of epigenetic regulation. The work that we do dovetails nicely with the epigenetics program at the University of Pennsylvania that brings together basic researchers as well as clinicians who use complementary approaches to study epigenetics. One really fun aspect of doing science at Penn is the collaborative environment here. In my lab, we utilize mass spectrometry-based proteomics to sequence, identify, and quantify thousands of proteins in a single experiment. With these experiments, we could determine exactly which pathways are activated during any biological process and when. The biological focus of my lab is to develop what we call middle and top-down proteomics to analyze combinations of post-translational modifications on proteins. We use these approaches and other proteomic methods to analyze epigenetic histone post-translational modifications. What we are trying to understand are how these histone modifications and the proteins that interact with them regulate gene expression, especially during diseases such as cancer. A big question that's puzzled biologists is how epigenetic information like this can be propagated over very long time scales. My group is obsessed with chromosomes. Chromosomes obviously contain all the information that make us what we are, but they also contain the information to direct their own inheritance. And this is an aspect that's fascinated biologists since the time of Mendel. It's invigorating for me as the head of a lab and the uh, trainer of the next generation of bioscientists to have individual projects where we can get very high resolution level uh, information on the molecules involved and then take that information back to the drawing board, leverage it to do things like try to create the next class of designer chromosomes for gene therapy applications and design and execute experiments that are going to uh, ask the next questions in human inheritance, human reproduction, and the defects in chromosome segregation that occur in cancer. Light at near infrared frequencies can be used uh, not only to probe structure and dynamics of individual proteins, but also to measure distributions of metabolites at a much larger scale, for example, at tissue level. One such metabolite is molecular oxygen. Oxygen is absolutely vital uh, for function of tissue, and yet conventional radiological methods, such as MRI or CT, are unable to quantify oxygen distributions in the body. So we are developing uh, the whole optical technology uh, for imaging oxygen and biological systems using phosphorescence. So our work encompasses synthetic chemistry and um, the whole array of spectroscopies uh, and quite a bit of engineering, but in the end we are using these molecules to obtain information about physiological status of disease tissue such as cancer and hoping uh, to find a new cure. Here at the biochemistry department, we are continuing the traditions of Dr. Britton Chance to invent new spectroscopies to be able to figure out how living things handle biological energy at a molecular scale 
all of life looks very similar to one another, where the organisms are using chemical energy and the light energy of photosynthesis in order to be able to move electrons through chains of redox centers inside proteins to be able to allow life to be able to grow and to develop. So we can use these lasers and these spectrometers around us to be able to follow the electron as it moves from center to center on a nanosecond to seconds time scale. We are making our own proteins from scratch, starting over, putting in the cofactors that we want, the colorful ones, watching their colors change, and making our own new designer proteins. We want to be able to take some of these parts and rearrange them to take sunlight and break water apart into hydrogen and oxygen to make a clean fuel to address the world's energy problems. We also want to rearrange those component parts in another way to be able to help solve medical problems like energy diseases in human beings. The focus of my work is to design proteins that function across membranes. We want to engineer proton pumps that transport electrons and protons across membranes to generate energy. We are also interfacing uh, the design proteins with inorganic substrates and uh, electronics, including graphene, and that brings a lot of collaborations together with the Department of Physics, Chemistry and the School of Engineering. Here at the University of Pennsylvania, these collaborations are very easy to establish and they drive the innovation. In essence, our goal is to identify how things really work in medicine so that we can identify Achilles heels and crutches that can be used to intervene when things go awry in disease.